Hi everyone, it's Allison, and this is a special digestive practice. So I will be going through some things um, for the most part that we're doing before we've eaten. There's gonna be one thing that we'll do um, sort of to make room after you've eaten a meal, but everything else should be done on a pretty empty stomach. Um, you can do this along with me as a practice unto itself, or feel free to look through for um, different tips and techniques about specific things that you might have questions about. Um, so yeah, be a little empty. Also, um, the main piece that we're gonna focus on is feeling movement into the organs. So I, I encourage you to keep an element of softness here. So even some of the kind of abdominal movements that we'll be doing won't come from a place of hardening or tightening, but rather um, we're gonna try to keep a level of softness. So we're gonna start on our backs. And this, if you have the room for it, I suggest doing you know, every morning, like right when you first wake up. So we're gonna start by outstretching the legs and outstretching the arms. Okay. Now, digestion moves from the right to the left. So we're gonna begin on the right side. This outstretched position will breathe in. And as you breathe out, bring your right knee into your chest and use your hands to help bring the thigh in. And then you'll breathe in to extend. And switch sides as you exhale, bring your left knee in. So that's the whole flow. What we're doing is breathing along with the movements, breathing in when we have more space here for the belly and breathing out to help assist this really gentle snug of the thigh toward the abdomen. So of course this massage is sort of how we're getting contents through our digestive organs anyway. So many of the movements that we do in yoga to assist this um, are coming from that same quality, you know, from giving a really gentle, purposeful snug or compression, almost like you're wringing out a sponge, but pairing that with a very important stretch or opening or spaciousness. Let's do one more round to each side. Okay, now the next time you outstretch, pause there and take a nice full cycle of breath. See if you can feel breath moving down into the belly. And we're gonna release the arms, bring a bend to the knees and roll off to one side and we're gonna come to all fours. So I have nearby, um, I have a stack of blocks that I'm gonna be using. Um, you might also have something available to you for down the road like this. But we're gonna come to hands and knees for a few rounds of the cat and cow. So lots of reasons that we do this exercise. Often you'll hear it um, talked about for uh, mobilizing and stretching and strengthening the muscles of the spine. So of course, that's happening, right? As you inhale, you're arching and ex extending your spine, and as you exhale, you're rounding and flexing your spine. But since our focus is the digestive organs today, I'm gonna have you imagine a really soft approach. As though as you exhale, imagine rather than a contracting or hardening of your abdominal muscles, imagine like a hollowing out or like a becoming sort of scooped or concave here. So that as you breathe in, you can feel that length and expanse and space. So it's a really gentle drawing in as you exhale. And a really gentle expanse as you inhale. So we're giving this loving little squish to the abdominal organs as we exhale. And then allowing for that really gentle space expanse as we inhale. Once more.
And then from here, uh, we're gonna practice a variation of the puppy pose. This is a really good one to know if, um, if ever you do get like a little um, gas pain or gas bubble or tummy ache. Um, basically, it's like child's pose, except we keep the hips high. So you keep your hips right on top of your knees. You create kind of a downward diagonal slope of your body and either rest onto stacked forearms or possibly if it feels very comfortable to you, you can rest with your arms extended. And for that, possibly rest onto your head. If your head doesn't land to the floor, you can use a block or blanket or something like that. Now the key with this shape, um, so we're gonna pause here for a few breaths. The key is to um, imagine that there's almost a softening of the abdominal muscles. I imagine like you can feel the weight of the organs resting onto the abdominal wall. But at the same time that you have a little lifting up through the back side of the body, kind of upper mid back as if puffing up toward the ceiling. So that you can feel breath moving really three dimensionally. We'll take another easy breath. And then gently you can make your way up. If your arms were extended, you can walk your hands in underneath you. And then from here, tuck with your toes and lift up with your hips. Keep a bend to your knees. So we're gonna imagine this is now like, again, that purposeful compression or that little snug, letting the weight of your torso really rest onto your thighs. So less about being a hamstring stretch, more about really letting go of the weight of the torso, letting go of the weight of the head. Let the contact of your thighs and your belly help you actually soften through your abdominal muscles. So you can breathe and feel expansion and contraction there. And we're gonna keep that bend to the knees and then roll up to a stand, spinal roll. At the height of that roll up, you might stretch the arms. And then we'll bring the palms together and come to a tadasana and come to a mountain pose. So we're gonna come back to this cat and cow type feel um, in a lunge. So this is where I'm gonna use my blocks. Um, you can make your way, if you're using a mat, maybe come to the front edge of your mat and we're gonna start actually with a little bit of a squat. So if you let your hips start to deepen back, let your sitting bones come back, allow your arms to come out in front of you, just really nice and light. So once again, see if you can feel that quality of breathing three-dimensionally while staying really full in your back. And the next time you exhale, you can fold in over your legs and take your hands either to floor or block. We're gonna step the right leg back for a low lunge. Now, for this lunge, make sure that your weight isn't in your hands. It's also not in your front foot only. So you might imagine like your back foot, your back leg, your back thigh is helping to stretch back. And in fact, let your hips lift a little bit. So I imagine like the feet are evenly reaching away from each other. Now, when we were in cow pose, we inhaled to extend. We're already pretty extended here. So we're just gonna breathe in in the lunge. Now as you breathe out, round your spine. So let your tail scoop in. Imagine becoming kind of hollowed out through the front body. You can bring your chin to your chest. And then let your inhalation bring you back into lunge. So you're feeling the legs and feet stretch away from each other. So that's the whole thing. We're gonna exhale and come into this cat lunge. See if you can let it become a real wavy, fluid, sort of easy motion, inhaling, coming back to lunge. Exhaling to round. And as you take two more, I'll also mention, imagine that your hands are actually helping with the rounding. So almost like your hands could push down and forward and allow that to create that hollowing out, that rounding in. Once more, exhaling. And we'll come back into the lunge. 
Now we're going to make our way forward into that standing child's pose or Uttanasana piece we did before. So we're going to lift our hips, step forward, fold in over bent knees. So let there be a bit of contact between belly and thigh. And then wave your way up to a stand. Stretch your arms at the top. And we'll bring the palms together and come back to Tadasana. Okay, next piece. We're gonna come back to this squat. So it's kind of like a chair pose, like you're finding a chair with your seat. You're gonna let your arms come forward. Take a nice easy breath in. And as you breathe out, bow forward. And then come up to a halfway position. So hands can either rest on blocks for that one, or you can bring your hands to your shins. We're gonna pause here for a few breaths. The last variation I'll offer you in this halfway up is to instead climb the heels of your palms up to the top mounds of your thighs. And for that, you would practice the action of being able to push your hands against your thighs. And as your thighs don't really go anywhere, that's gonna actually send your shoulders a bit forward. What it's also doing is stretching the abdominal wall. So you might feel like you're bringing your rib cage away from your pelvis a little bit. All right, we're gonna take a breath in here. And as you breathe out, fold back in and step your left leg back for low lunge. So your hands can be on floor or blocks either side of your front foot. Again, see that you're not just in your front leg, but you're lifted through your hips, extended through your back leg. And then we just find this kind of wavy, rolly cat and cow within the shape. So this will be the inhale. See so if you can really wait for the exhalation to create that rounding in. So your tail comes underneath you, your back rounds, your chin comes in. And the inhalation, it all reverses, coming back to lunge. Continue with your breath. So your exhalation, rounding your inhalation, lunge. Twice more, and still with this quality, less of clenching or you know crunching your abdominals. Imagine a real kind of easy, soft, wavy, Right. Gentle motion. Once more. Now when you come back to lunge, right. from here, we're going to step back either for all fours or the downward facing dog pose. So if you're on blocks, you can set them off to the side and then make your way back. If you're in downward dog, take a full breath just to outstretch through all four limbs. And then we're gonna make our way down to the knees and all the way down to the belly. Go ahead and slide up to the forearms for a moment in a sphinx pose. So most of our prone face down back bends in yoga, the purpose is actually to give this really gentle um, massage and purposeful compression again to the abdominal organs, helps speed along digestion. So we're gonna come into some of those next. So from Sphinx Pose, you can lower your way down and bring your arms straight back by your sides for Locust. Now this is one option. Second option would be to interlace your fingers behind your back and to roll your shoulders away from the floor. The key with this is to let the breath move you. So let the exhale really slowly lower you toward the ground and use the inhalation to peel up. You'd reach your arms, you might even float your legs, and you'd use your exhalation to slowly lower down. And you might notice with this, as you rise and fall with the breath, that you're getting this gentle massage from the bottom to the top as you exhale. And then you're peeling away from the top to the bottom as you inhale. Go ahead and take one more breath. When you're ready, you can lower all the way down and rest either onto your forearms. You might rest to one cheek. You might bring a bend to your knees and give a little swish side to side.
Okay, now last option. So you can come back to the locust pose like we just did, or you can come into a Dhanurasana to bow pose. So for this, you would keep your knees bent. You would reach back and take a hold of either your pant legs or your ankles or your feet or your toes, whatever you can reach. You could also use a strap. Now the key here is to let your neck be part of the curve of your spine. So see if you can avoid overarching your neck and bring your gaze just right in front of you. We're gonna exhale. And as we inhale like locust, roll back. See if you can kick your feet into your hands. Let that help you lift for bow. Use your exhalation to lower just a bit, your inhalation to lift you. And as you continue to ride the wave of the breath here, you can dial this in. If you feel this too much in your knees, you can play with what you're doing in your feet. So maybe you're pointing toes, maybe you're flexing, doesn't matter, find the one that works for you. And we're gonna aim for five really great breaths. Once you've taken those five breaths, you can lower down. And once again, rest either to your forearms, you could rest to one cheek. You're probably hearing gurgles at this point, that's great. Um, so we're gonna come back into one of the resting poses. And your choice here, I'll change my microphone up here. Um, you can come into the puppy pose like we did before, the child's pose, or the downward facing dog pose. Take a few breaths there and that kind of counter stretch for your hips and for your back and for your arms and shoulders. And then eventually from there, we're gonna meet back at all fours. Now, from all fours, we're gonna once again come back up to a standing position. So if you want, you can roll up like we did before, tuck your toes, lift your hips with a bend to the knees, roll up to a stand, giving a stretch with your arms. And then we'll come back to Tadasana. And we're gonna start to head toward some of the yoga practices, the kriyas, that are a little bit more internal. So this is why it's important to have that sense of being soft with the approach. Um, this is very much not any kind of grip or like tensing kind of shape. The idea is to actually move and massage the organs. So some of you have done this in my classes before. This is one obviously you would not do if you've eaten, you know, if you're pregnant, high blood pressure, those kinds of things. Skip it. You can even fast forward or come back to some of the other things that we've done. Um, otherwise, I'm going to do my best to demonstrate it. So um, the first important piece is to bend the knees and to bring the hips back. So this is kind of like that squat thing we did before. This won't work, this next exercise won't work if you're tucked under. Um, it also won't work if you are straight with your legs. <clears throat> so you're bent with your knees and your hips are coming back. Now the way I like to explain this is basically we're creating a suction. You're gonna use your diaphragm as a bit of a vacuum and you're gonna bring your organs up and under the ribs while you have the breath out after you've taken an exhalation. You might be able to simulate it by not breathing in for a moment, keeping your mouth closed, but imagine that you're going to breathe in and it will create kind of like a, like a sectioning in, like a sucking in type feel. That's what we're aiming to find. Okay. So basically it looks like this. I'm going to try to show you from the side here. So I'm gonna let my hands actually rest onto my thighs and I'm not just placing them there. I'm actually sitting into my hands, right? So if that's too much on your palms or too much on your wrists, you can always modify, but this is one thing that will help this next exercise. Now I'm gonna soften the abdominals. I'm gonna breathe in through my nose. I'm gonna breathe out really slowly and fully from the mouth. And then I'm gonna keep the breath held out and create the suction. It's called Uriana Bandha. Full breath out. I'm gonna keep the breath out and create suction. <laughs> to release, I relax the belly, the breath pours in, come back to stand and rest. Okay. So 
play with this. We're gonna do it a couple more times. If you're not getting it, don't worry. Do keep exploring, um, but pause in between each round so that you can rest your system and see that you're soft with your breath. Okay, the other piece I'm just going to point out is that when you're actually in the suction, right, that your hands are pushing the, the legs away, your shoulders are coming up, this is gonna draw your chin toward your chest. So it ends up in kind of this lifted position, almost like you're drawing your rib cage up and away from your pelvis. Right, let's try it again. So we're gonna breathe in, breathe out fully. Keep the breath out, find the suction. Soften the belly, breathe in, come back up. Okay, so this one is awesome to work with. I would suggest doing it no more than once or twice a day. Um, I'm gonna move on, but if you're still working with getting that piece, stay there. Um, the next piece I'm just gonna uh, emphasize, if you bring your hands to your belly, notice that it's possible, separate from the breath, to create this little kind of pump forward and back of your abdomen. All right, there's kind of a forward and back. We're gonna do that within the suction. So you're basically going to create this kind of massage tool using your rectus abdominis, and it's going to give you this massage forward and back. So this also I'll show you, it starts with the suction piece. I'm gonna breathe out. I'm gonna find the suction and then the pump. When I release, breath flows in. That's because my breath was out. Stand and relax. This is called Agni Sara, right, which means the fire of the ram. Um, really nice to build digestive fire. We're gonna do that whole thing once more. Your choice, whether you're working with the Uddiyana Bandha, the suction piece, or the pump forward and back. So find your stance, soften the belly. We're gonna breathe in, breathe out. Keep the breath out and then find either suction or the pump. Release, breathe in, come to a stand. By all means, pause, continue to work on that. If you feel like, oh, I'm just so close, I've almost got it. Um, otherwise, we're gonna move on and we're gonna do um, one last piece, and this is now for post-digestion. So I have a chair over here that I'm gonna uh, move closer. There are a couple different ways to do this. The idea is to get space and opening now for the belly, and we've done quite a lot of kind of compression in and out. So um, one idea is that you sit near the edge of a couch or chair. We want the edge to actually meet us right at the upper mid back. Um, you can do that just sitting straight onto your seat. I'm gonna actually place blocks here and I'm gonna show you this from a kneeling position. So you basically, I'm gonna sit onto a little stack of blocks. <clears throat> this will also help bring my body into the position where I'm meeting the chair in the right place. I'm actually gonna take one down. Mm -hmm. Now, from here, if this bothers your knees or your feet or your ankles, by all means, extend your legs out. Right? But from here, I can lay back against the chair. Also notice that my chair is next to the wall, so it doesn't have anywhere to go. Right? And then I have this stack of blocks, and you might be using blocks or a pillow or a blanket for my head. So I'm going to take a hold of my head with my hands, and I'm trying just to lay back, really to open space here of the belly, and I'm going to find this ledge of blocks. Now, all sorts of possibilities. I could just let my head rest and my arms hang. That's kind of my favorite. Some people, depending on what you're using, will take a hold of the chair or they let their arms rest above their head. All right, so whatever the position, this is a nice post-digestive pose. And the idea is that as you hang here for a few breaths, that you're relaxing the abdominals. You're allowing movement massage of breath there.
And this is definitely one you can be in for minutes at a time. Okay. So you're welcome to stay here. When you're ready to come out, you would bring your hands underneath your head and scoop your head back up. All right, and come forward so that you're sitting onto your prop, your block, or your seat. And we're gonna finish this whole thing up with one last twist. So by all means, if you're still in that supported position, stay there. Right. Otherwise, we're just gonna come into a really gentle seated twist. So you can um, fold one leg underneath you and cross the other leg over. This is one great option. If your seat doesn't make it to the floor, you can do something like this instead where you have your bottom leg extended. But basically the leg that's on top, you're gonna to turn in that direction. So my right leg is on top. I'm gonna to take my left arm over, take my right hand behind. Now this is also pre-digestive. It's just gonna be a nice release after the gentle back bend as well. As you take a few breaths twisting, see if you can soften the belly so you can feel breath. We find so often that we're engaging the abdominals, which means they're not available to breathe us. They're not available to massage the organs, which is what they require. You can use an inhalation to come back to center and reverse. So you can either just switch your legs or if you know the little spinny trick, you can spin around. So either both knees are bent or your bottom leg is straight. You're gonna loop around. So now my left leg is on top. My right arm is going to cross over. My left hand is coming behind me. And if you can stay pretty soft in the belly, that will allow the breath to turn you, right? If you feel like you've come to your max and you're hanging out there and you're using your arms, let it be soft. Let it be a massage to your digestive organs. And the next time you inhale, you can come back around to center and undo. Great time to rest if you'd like to practice a Shavasana or take a few breaths seated. But this whole area should feel a little more awake. You might have some gurgles. You might feel thirsty. You might feel hungry. Um, enjoy this. Practice the whole thing or practice pieces of it. And let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you for trying this video and I'll see you in the next one.